Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I'm, of course, Nick McDaniel, and as always, I am joined by my Muddy Myron. Uh, hey, folks. Um, always hard to follow a tin bell. Um, those things get me teared up because, you know, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan. And Scott Hall had such an impact on professional wrestling, probably more profound than you realize on the surface, till we actually sat back and started talking about what all he accomplished where all he had wrestled. I mean, he dates from the territories through probably my favorite WWF period into WCW and the start of the NWO. Let, let me ask you, you just brought that up and you, you know, it's something that like, like I said, I hadn't thought about it a ton. It is like, is Scott Hall one of the last wrestlers? Cause he was there in Florida championship wrestling from Florida. Uh-huh. And he, Again, like you said, went all the way to the modern era, you know, attitude era, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, is he the la- one of the last guys that did that? Did that? Uh, it's if he's not, those guys are going out fast, man. Yeah. You know, there's not there's not that many of them, and that character. I mean, he basically was doing Razor Ramon and in, in WCW. He was Scott Hall there, but you know, it's a character. Uh, and it was, it was, he was a, he was a great, great talent. He's going to be missed on so many ways. Uh, I've never, one of the people I've never seen such an outpouring of love for, you know, when they passed and he, it's been, cause I think he was tied to a lot of people we know. That's more probably than we it, realized. Yeah. He was, uh, in with the DDP community. And, uh, those are some of, some of the people I really treasure the most in the wrestling business and as friends. So, uh, it's been hit close to home with this one. Yeah. I mean, and our heart goes out to them and, you know, his friends, his family, um, you know, and I think that's because like you said, it is, it does hit closer to home than a lot of them have, um, you know, in the past. Um, and, you know, and when you talk about like the influences that he had, I mean, it's, you know, so from. On one side, it's the the business side of it. You know, the one of the first guys to jump that kind of pushed their you know downside guarantees, favored nations clauses, et cetera. You know, all the business he was involved in one of the biggest angles uh, when it comes to pro wrestling. You know, the NWO, of course. Um, Sting credits him with you know with coming up with the crow gimmick that he did for so mm-hmm. long. Um, so it kind of shows you the mind, you know. And like I said, but talking to you know friends of ours that knew him. That that's what they talk about, like is how great his mind was, and you you'll hear Eric Bischoff talk about it on a regular sure. basis, about how sharp his mind was to uh, you know to pro wrestling, and you know it's a it's going to be a loss that the wrestling world, you know, will yeah. feel. You know, you hear about stories yeah. about NXT, you know, him being down there with, with Sean and them teaching those kids. Um, so I think there's, you know, in sports we talk about the uh, the the wrestling there's the coaching tree. Yeah. I think that you'll see a lot of that, you know, with Scott Hall's like got a little, you know, taught this guy, taught this guy, taught this guy, you know, a lot of that trickles down and uh, you know, we, Triple H. Yeah. Shawn Michaels to the in the biggest forces behind WWE at the time, right now. Uh wow. And a childhood icon growing old sucks ass. Yeah, it does. You I know? mean, uh and what I was gonna say, um, you know, is I think maybe, you know, a good bonus and I and I'm not plugging here you know, patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. Uh, what we should do is we should maybe do like our favorite matches or you know, Scott Hall matches or oh, yeah. moments, oh. segments, matches, something to that effect. Maybe do something like that over there. That would be like really cool to do, I think. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, we should yeah. check that out. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep on moving along. Um, uh, but so, you know, but the show, you know, we're, as you know, and I'm sure Scott would say the show's got to go on, right? You got, yes, sir. Got to go to work. And it, what did we see on TV this week, Nick? Yeah, man, that's that's, that's you know our weekly uh, segment that we you know start the show off with is w- what we saw that stood out on us, and boy that did that ever stand painful. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, amongst other things, right? Um, I think the continuation of Brock heading to WrestleMania is like a huge. Uh, the road to WrestleMania is yeah. always so much fun to me. Uh, wow, they've done such a good job booking some of these storylines, Brock. Stalking his way in, chasing Paul Heyman, Charlotte and Rhonda brawling on top of a car. Wow. Yeah. 
That was monster, wow. man. That was awesome. Uh, I mm-hmm. thought it was done really well. The brawl itself was handled extremely yes. well. And I think that's probably the strength of where they are over there on yeah. SmackDown right now. So, mm-hmm. um, the, you know, on Raw, the continuation of Edge's, you know, obviously the turn, he's going to fight AJ at Mania, but this whole, yeah. like, a dark character, you know, Edge is creepy, even to the point, I don't know if you saw that. Beth Phoenix tweeted out, like, this is not you, or, or this isn't you, or Ooh. something to that effect. Kind of even, like, even his family's, like, saying, like, hey, wait, what's wrong with you kind of thing. Sell it. Sell yeah. it. But I'm digging it. I know that sounds me- weird. Yeah. Like, I, my No, it's, was, it's a great way to tell a story. Yeah. He, maybe his way to say, like, the only way I get the best out of AJ is to give you the worst of me or the best of me or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so cool little story they're going on. Uh, something that stood out this week to me, and I don't know why it jumped off the page. Dominic Mysterio and NXT struck home to me going like, okay, this is not a bad place for him. <laughs> yeah, he needs, I, I'm not saying he needs polish physically as a wrestler. I think he needs a little polish as a performer. And, you know, his dad never was a big talker. So uh, maybe maybe this will be good for him. Well, they're yeah. already using, I mean, like Miz was on there, you know, for, with a Dolph Ziggler segment. Dolph's back there as champion, uh, which kudos, by the way, that was a really solid match with him in LA night last night, or, you know, obviously we're recording on Wednesday yeah. on NXT. Um, obviously, Ziggler's there to set up a big stand and deliver, you know, match mm-hmm. versus Braun Breaker. Uh, but, you know, kind of back to the, I think, Guys moving back and forth will help that brand, and I think that's probably a plan. It looks like yeah, really yeah, it put put some steroids into it. Um, but I I do love Dominic there getting some chance to kind of get some reps, not on the main roster show, whatever you want. Or not call with it. his dad, uh, out from under his dad for a little while. Well, if his dad's going with him, it's kind of defeats you know. But I mean, you know, there there's that. So yeah. Um. Then, of course, you know, guys, we're recording on Wednesday. Time travel back. Obviously, we're going to talk about Dynamite. Uh, Jeff Hardy's big debut. Um, I, I still find it hilarious. I know there were memes out there and all the stuff about it that he danced to the ring while his brother was getting hey. shit kicked out of him. But um, A Hardy entrance is very important. One of the best WrestleMania moments of all time with our Hardy brothers. Yeah. Uh, Hardy boys entrance. So... Here's the here's the I, thing though. You got to get that interest, man. Nick's philosophy boy has relaxed over the last few weeks on a lot of things, <laughs> and it was somebody was having that debate with me about like, oh my god, I can't believe they did that. Why didn't I'm like, dude, it's wrestling. Yeah, I, I get it. Trust me, I understand. Like, oh, it should he shouldn't have, probably shouldn't have, but in the grand scheme of things, it happened in AEW, so I don't think it really matters. Doesn't really need to make sense, right? Because it's going to be okay because everybody got the moment they wanted anyway. Yep. Um, speaking of moments, Wardlow Wardlow cut a pretty good promo. It was this the I always tell people is this the first step, not the turn. The turn was kind of like the switch. Him in his first promo, stepping out of the shadow of MJF and cutting that promo, I think now sets them up in their feud. And I think it had to happen. Oh, it, it had it was to over. happen. It, it wasn't you over. You have to get well. that promo. You have to establish yourself. I, and you know, did he ever get to talk when he was with MJF? Rarely, but yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you gotta, you gotta establish your character. You're not just the good guy because of like default. You've got to get it out there. Yeah. I like this. Good, yeah. good character building. Um, uh, And then, you know, the other big piece on, uh, I know everybody's get hit with a buzz. First of all, I argue probably overdue, but Scorpio Sky is the new TNT champion defeating Sammy Guevara. Here's the crazy thing. When somebody asked my opinion, by the way, it's an opinion, so it doesn't really matter. Scorpio Sky was overdue for a title. For a title, Yeah. But I felt it was too soon to take it off of Sammy. So it was kind of a conflicting like thought of, you know, uh-huh. in my opinion. I thought Sammy could use it for longer. Scorpio should have been the champion. Like, here's my problem. He probably should have been one of the, like, the first champions. Yeah. But... Cody was going to have that spot and so forth and so on. So whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Tons of other stuff. But I know big impact news that yes. I thought was really cool. I like to see this. The Motor City Machine Guns are back together. Uh, Alex Shelley uh, was injured and put a stop to a great run they had going on a while back. Uh, 
Saban did get to work and kind of come into his own as far as my knowledge of him. I wasn't that familiar with him. And, uh, man, the Bullet Club. Uh, the new Bullet Club. Again, got there I'm in, asking. In Impact Bullet Club better than AEW Bullet Club. Yeah. Yeah, Which I'm enjoying funny. it. funny. Yeah. I, well, the thing is, Impact seems like they are have just – an insane amount of creative freedom and they're making like old old schooler is not a word more old school type like wrestling moves that me and you would identify with instead of the AEW wrestling moves that are more with the younger generation of wrestling fans so and you know this whole show is our opinion absolutely um but yeah, uh, I just wish they were on a better network. Still, I mean, I know people can watch it on YouTube, and they've picked up the so, you know. The I watch YouTube it later TV on stuff, on, uh, on YouTube. That's to me. That's the best way to do it. YouTube's always open on my on my on my. We're on YouTube. Everybody's on YouTube. I watch YouTube more than I do television. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, but. You know, it's it's taking your pick and taking your choices, and making sure. But the best play. To get your picks in, is over at our buddies over at Prize Picks. Oh yeah. You still working on this? It's two minutes to kick off. Who do I pick? Two words: Prize Picks. It's so easy. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. It's just you against the number. Simply pick the over under on two or more players, and that's it. You can win up to ten times your money in just one day. Join over 150,000 people who found a better way to play. Download the Prize Picks app today and get your first deposit match up to $100. That's right, man. Check over over Prize Picks, man. I'm playing almost every Use day. Use that promo code. Yeah. It'll $100 be... matched on your deposit? Could be. Absolutely. Ooh. Use it. Um, and check them out, man. I'm playing almost every day. Uh, it's just funny. Uh, I just, I've gotten into playing like basketball prop picks. Uh, what I love about prize picks is you're not playing against like every other player. Basically you make your picks and if you get them right, then, you know, it's prop betting. Will a player get more than X amount of points or less than number of points? Pick over or under, you know, you can do two players. If you get them both right, boom, you win money. Wow. So you're not competing with other people and splitting pots and all that crazy stuff like on some of the other ones. But, you know, yeah. hey, uh, it's always fun. In my opinion, I have a blast with doing it. Um, but I'll tell you what I did have fun with, man. I did something uh-huh. on Monday night that I have not done <laughs> in forever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, friend of the show sent in a question that actually yes. asked about it. Seth from Sharpsville, Pennsylvania, wanted to know how wild was it that people watched three hours of Raw and then got upset when Cody never appeared. That picture was not put out by the <laughs> WWE, by the way. It was not. Um, and I will tell you, like, it was... Uh, so, it wasn't their best number ever. Like, I mean, as far as average viewers, blah, blah, blah. It was the lowest one they've had since, you know, the 15th of January, Since uh, as far as being on <laughs> USA Network. I got it. Um, and we always say, like, we don't want to... Because I'm not talking about ratings, per se. I'm not caring. But what I did find interesting, 1.668 million the first hour, 1.755, so it went up the second hour. That's actually not abnormal, not normal, normal, but not abnormal. But hour three at 1.678, which essentially means they maintained from beginning to end, they didn't lose anything. They actually gained a little bit. Um, More people watch the end than the beginning, and the end is 11 o'clock, for Christ's sake. I came home from work. I get off work at nine o'clock, got home at nine 30 said, let's turn on some raw. Yeah. I want to see what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the whole thing kind of struck me as odd that I'm watching and I'm like, okay, here's when Cody comes. Okay. Here's when Cody comes. Okay. They got a minute left. They got 30 seconds left. No, where's Cody. And they never told me. No one ever said Cody was coming. So, I will tell you worse, how they had me worse than that. So, I watched from the beginning. So, they they kind of teased. They had the Seth Rollins promo. The crowd's chanting for Cody. Then they get to where, you know, hey, Seth's going to go to the ring. 
Okay, here it comes, right? Here's it, because that's, that's the rumor, right? That's He's wrestling him, and then, so that's the rumor. So <laughs> then they get into that segment, and they say, hey, we're going to have a match in the main event between Owens and Rollins. Okay, well, that means that's when it's going to happen. So it's going to mm-hmm. happen at the end of the show. Because Rollins are, I mean, sorry, Owens already has a program for Mania. Yeah, yeah, he's doing the Austin thing, so that's set in stone, right? Mm-hmm. So then here's the crazy thing. I actually, on my guide, I slide it down to tell me, and it says, it says Raw goes off at 11.03. It actually had it like three minutes late. So I'm Oh, like, so which when, when they, they haven't done. So, exactly. So then I'm sitting there going like, oh, okay. So the match is over, and in my head, I'm like, dude, they still got four minutes. So it's, they still got time. <laughs> but when that little freaking symbol, the copyright signal, whatever, came into the corner, that's when it goes off, folks. Yeah. When that came up, I'm like, wait, what? You know, and it went off. And I'm like, and no my wife Cody. literally went, no, Cody. And I was like, no, Cody. No, Cody. She goes, who was your source? Because your source was wrong. And I was like, well, the fucked up part of it all, <laughs> nobody actually ever said he was going to be on there. <laughs> like, I, I did a, so over on Patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod, I, every, every, not every so often, not every day. If my brain fills up, I call it the daily mind dump that I I drop it on our Patreon page. I just it's just raw audio as it comes. It's just me talking. The other day, I literally was like, if Cody's not on Raw in Jacksonville, it's too late. Like they, 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 you can't get him in at main. You know, it blah blah blah. It'll have to be after, or he's not coming. We have literally jacked ourselves up to the point that Cody was going to be there. We all convinced ourselves he was going to be there. It's like that uh, We're was freaking it Mandela marks. effect is what they call it or whatever. You know, <laughs> We're marks, Myra. We, Mass hypnosis. We convinced We're all ourselves. Sure. We were going to see him. Nick, I was sure he was coming. Yeah. You know, that's why he tuned in, dude. I'm so damn tired after work. And I was I was eating my dinner and I'm like, oh, what's... oh Cody's coming tonight. Cody's coming tonight. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, I, you I'm, know. To their defense, I saw people on social media beating up WWE about it, and I'm like, they never said he was coming. No, like we did this to ourselves. This wasn't their fault. Like they didn't. Cody uh, posted that picture on social media heading to Jacksonville. Okay, he's part. He's an asshole because he tagged Raw he's, on it. He's done that before. <laughs> a, I know. A, here's the thing. Right now, Cody Rhodes has the best storyline in professional wrestling, but he doesn't work for anybody. All we're talking about is where he's going to turn up. Half the stories on the on the, on all the gossip sites for wrestling are where's Cody going to turn up? Yeah. What's Cody doing? And he's not doing anything. He's just teasing. Yeah. Would his daddy be proud? I think Dusty would be proud of this. I, I agree with you, man. Uh, you know, he's working everybody, and that yeah. you know, if Vince is involved, if Tony Khan's involved, fuck him. Awesome. Yeah. Good kudos to them, uh, you know, because look, time's running out because we are heading to WrestleMania, which leads oh, yeah. to us to our next question. Gavin, our friend Gavin from Torrance, California, wants to know, do you have any predictions for big events at WrestleMania this year? Okay. Well, what do you got, Nick? Well, obviously there's two nights, so there's lots of you know time for stuff to go crazy. Uh-huh. Lots of stuff to go on. And, and honestly, here's my new thing. I, I, I on record said, if Cody didn't show up on Raw in Jacksonville, I felt it was too late. Then I thought to myself, I said, self, maybe we're just overthinking this. Maybe he just freaking shows up at WrestleMania. I mean, people are will be the first that. time that's happened. Because the only reason to have him before would be try to sell tickets. Okay, full. look, I'm trying to say this with all due respect. Do I think he would massively sell tickets? By no, I don't think he would. Um, okay, well, you got got to think of the bubble, folks. Roman Reigns is more notable and recognized sure. outside the bubble than Cody Rhodes. It's just the way it was. Now, I I think honestly, Seth Rollins is in the ring at Mania, complaining he doesn't have a match, just complaining whatever. Maybe he does a challenge, or maybe he's just running his mouth and cue up Cody's new music, whatever the hell it is, you know, and he comes out and the crowd goes bananas. Uh, look, you talked about the Hardy Boys thing earlier, right? So the, their entrance oh, yeah. at WrestleMania when they came back, how crazy the crowd went. Yes. Maybe that's the moment they're going for. 
versus the let's let it out there. Let's just have him freaking show up and pop the crowd. I mean, maybe have a WrestleMania moment without it being leaked and being out there. So there's one. I'm going to go with that's what I think at this point. And that's by the way, I'm probably prediction. wrong. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's wow. WrestleMania is such a big event. We're sitting here saying what might happen and predicting it. And I think that right there is probably uh, the prediction everybody wants. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of hard. I mean, Seth not having a program this late, that doesn't sound right. I, I, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you also got big things about uh, Bianca and Becky. What do you think is going to happen uh, there? Well, both, I think both champions of the women's division. So this is two picks, by the way, predictions, whatever you want to call it. I think Bianca beats Becky. I think Ronda beats Charlotte. I think Bianca is to reestablish herself as a player. Like, you know, she got that Rumble win and so forth mm-hmm. and so on. Uh, I think um, last year, by the way, um, I think Ronda beat Charlotte to kind of, again, reestablish herself as the top, you know, person on over there. As top, top villain, or not villain, but the top foe to Charlotte. I think that's probably what they need. And so she'll shut her up, take her belt off of her. By the way, folks, well, it is also in some other math. It also gives Charlotte another chance to win another title. Yeah, as she's chasing seventeen. <laughs> but as as we as we uh, talk about Rousey, and then we're going to talk about Lesnar. I think the thing you're saying you're predicting Brock Lesnar will beat Roman and unify the titles. But Brock Lesnar's been around a long time. Isn't it time for him to go away for a little while? Ronda's been around. I think Was she going to go away. I think they when they re-signed him. I think he was because that was SummerSlam. He came back. I think so. Yeah. If it was SummerSlam, they at least got him through that year. So my question becomes: Is he, I, ultimately the reason I think Brock Lesnar wins? And again, just I mean, I'm guessing here at this point. The reason I think he would win. Is because it's kind of due, right? Like, listen, here, look. Roman Reigns was the champion for uh, with that long and uninterrupted run because of one thing. They have successfully gotten rid of Punk off of the record books. They have successfully, you know, I'm not saying they wanted to get Brock, but you had to get Brock off but you know, to other record books. So now Roman is that guy. So now, and I think you could take it off of it and put it back on him maybe at SummerSlam this year like the rematch would be at SummerSlam because then you have another major headlining match for those two. Mm-hmm. Plus, I'm wondering, it's two things. If he wins, I could see this happening. If he loses, I could still see this happening. I know everybody think if you want a big shocking moment, I think The Rock could return and you basically have Rock and Roman do what him and Cena did years ago when they basically advertise or hype a match for the following year's WrestleMania, where those two are going to face each off, you know, face off with one another at next year's WrestleMania at 39. That makes perfect sense to me. Cause I wasn't, it, wasn't it Cena and Miz, the rock is the host of the, the mania rock causes a problem. Miz wins sets up Cena for rock on the next year. Correct. Something like that, I think it could happen again. I, I so. could see, and this is this is you know, let us know tappedoutpod at gmail dot com because this is a scenario that I have it both ways. If Roman wins, he basically starts that smack talk, you know, of like he's the head of the table, blah blah blah. Rock Who's comes next? out to challenge the head of the table. Mm-hmm. If Bron- if Roman loses, you can still have Rock come out, basically trying to maybe kind of give him like help him up and be like you know. And then he gets the shove and the put the disrespect, and you lead up to that moment as well. So I still think you can get there either way. Um, me personally, I like the win, and then the what's next, and then of course that's you know mm. the, the the rock moment. So, um, but unfortunately, like look, we we can, we don't know if Roman or we don't know if Rock's going to be there. Unfortunately, based on events that happened on Friday, we do know oh, somebody man. who will not be at WrestleMania. Man. Keith from West Columbia, South Carolina. What are your thoughts on Big E's injury on SmackDown? Well, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, 
man. Would you, was it the guy? Was it that Ridge Holland guy's fault? Was it a bad suplex? I didn't watch the. I hate watching videos of guys getting injured. Yeah. Okay, that's my thing. I, I if I find out a guy got injured, I really don't want to see it. Yeah. So I didn't watch it. Uh, is he is he green? Uh, listen, I I don't like to get into the it's this guy's fault, it's that guy's fault, or whatever. I mean, it happened. You know, unfortunately. I know Taz weighed in and talked about technique and all that kind of stuff, and I, I don't know. Um, was it risky? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know that it was necessary. I mean, having, you know, I, I just don't, on the floor, even if there's padding, I just don't like guys flipping over. Yeah. You know, where their head, there's even that remote chant. So, um, you know, uh, so we'll see. I mean, I know, look, they're talking about like, hey, you know, he's, of course, being super positive, which is shocking, right? I mean, he's Mr. Yeah. Positivity. Um, I know there was one doctor who came out and was like, you know, hey, this thing could possibly not heal back. He could be done. Um, yeah. It would be a damn shame if that's how his career ended. That's all I would say yeah. I mean, when it comes yeah. to that. Um, I, I, he is such a solid commodity. He's a good wrestler. He's got a good look. He can talk. He's popular, um, fairly highly regarded, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's stuff he can do in the wrestling business. Uh, I don't know what WWE would use him for, but they could have him. You know, Titus O'Neil doesn't wrestle anymore, and he's their main ambassador. Yeah, I, I think there's plenty of things that Big E brings to the table other than wrestling. But here's the thing. Hopefully he just turns turns the nose up on the thing, heals up fine, and he comes back because that's that's what I'm hoping, you know. Whether it's six months, nine months, a year, eight, whatever, um, you know. Do we want to see him back in the ring? Absolutely. Do we hope yeah. he's healthy? That's the bigger thing in my opinion. Um, but listen, as as positive as a guy is, as much as a health you know freak he is, yeah. If I were betting, you know, I would bet on him. That's just my yes. thing. I would put on him. Yeah. Um, you know, and hey, listen, again, if you are a betting person, we got a couple other friends that you might want to check out. Oh, man, man, if you, you like, like betting, you like roulette, you like blackjack, all that good stuff. Check out our friends over at mybcasino.ag. Uh, you can bet from the comfort of your own home. And again, that is M is in money, Y is in yes, B is in bravo, casino.ag. They're giving out 200% welcome bonuses, you know, for signing up right now. Guaranteed lightning fast payout systems that get you your cash really quick. They have all your usual favorites, blackjack, roulette, etc. But even a live dealer casino, real people dealing out real cards. So it's something you definitely need to check out. Again, go over to mybcasino.ag and enter our special promo code WRESTLING to ensure that you're eligible for all the future promotions and bonuses and stuff they've got running out. So if you want to do Vegas from your own home and your own couch, man, check it out. It's M as in money, Y as in yes, B as in bravo. That's mybcasino.ag with your special code, wrestling. Well, all right, man. Like I said, if you that's you know we got look, we're covering you if you're if you're coming to your like on sports, if you like uh, cards, all that good stuff. Gambling got you covered all over the place, man. So check out all of our things. Check them out in the show notes of uh, love it all of those things. But uh, let's keep it rolling, buddy, and move right on into the next question. Jackson from Stewart, Florida. Now that CM Punk versus MJF feud is over, who should Punk face next? Hmm. Um. I, who you got, man? I mean, who would be your couple? Well, of we got we got we got a lot of good choices. Um, I think probably I'd start with Moxley. Straight Edge versus Moxley, crazy, you know, wacky, you know. Moxley versus Straight unhinged Edge, unhinged or whatever he's yeah, called. Yeah, you got a good one there. That's a good story. I like that. Um, I think Brian Danielson is probably where we're going to see the the best work. I think they could easily feud. Uh, Moxley and, and Danielson are apparently tag team partners now, or they're going to be a faction with Regal leading it. I can't keep up with all the AEW. What if Punk stuff, got a man? partner in those, and they had a, like a team feud? Ooh. I don't know who that. I don't know who who would be his partner. I mean, but that, that's a whole well, other there's, conversation. There's a there's a lot you could do. God, yeah. Um, Kenta, they got the same finisher. 
Yeah, I've read that a lot on the internet. That, that you know, they'd like, hey, we can bring in Kenta, and you have the the GTS, you know, the New Japan, blah blah blah, kind of thing, back and forth. Um, I think that's that's here. Here's here's my take on Kenta. I, I like the answer, but I think you just that's you want to talk about starting here and narrowing it down to the niche inside <laughs> the niche. That's your Kenta. There, yeah. That will be the hundred percent placating to the diehard fan base, and, and I don't know if you get much more out of that. Of course, but that being said, I mean, listen, most of your scenarios, Moxley and Danielson, in my opinion, are probably the two most, as far as, like, exposure, bigger picture story. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know a lot of people want Kenny Omega as well. But, look, I don't even Not know if bad. he's healthy, right? Is he even back? When's he coming back? Who the hell knows? Um, and then, of course, my pick? It's Hangman Adam Page. Sober up the cowboy? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> here, because here, this has not been the popular. I have said for weeks that I feel like the 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 feud with him and Adam Cole felt like almost would you I would argue it was probably third tier story. Yeah. I would put because at the time MJF and Punk felt like the the one. Yeah. I mean, and then you know, like you could start getting into all these other like Moxley and Danielson felt like a bigger thing than Cole and Page. So it, let's have a let, I mean, I, I it was my opinion. In my opinion alone, I feel like look, it's time for Punk to put like that title back as the most important thing on the show. Maybe that's just my take. Because well, for it's now weird I don't feel like way, it has been. Yeah, it's weird the way they use that. I mean, they got so damn many belts over there, though. Yeah. It's speaking of which, with. Yeah, exactly. We got two belts here on the women. Our friend from Dur our friend Derwin from Conway, Arkansas wants to know, do you think that Jade Cargill versus Britt Baker feud is the future for AEW? Um well it's gonna have to happen. Yes. You got two women's titles. Are you going to be champion? Do we have to do champion versus champion? That that was going to be my answer. I think is it going to happen? Yes, at some point it has to. Um, I just I just don't. It, it would be a great way to elevate Jade. By the way, mm -hmm. I yeah. think it would do her wonders. Um, but for for the love of God, please get the title off one of them. Like, yeah. Before we get there, because I don't want champion versus champion. Well, we got Thunder Rose in the cage tonight against Britt. If I mean to be last night when you're listening to this. Yeah. But. Wow, that's going to be a, a killer match. And I think Thunder Rosa is somebody else that could really put uh, Jade Cargill over. Sure. And I and think working with veterans will help her. If 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 Thunder Rosa loses to Britt and she has to, like, drop down to kind of work her way back up, Jade would be a good step, like, to have that for you to try to – the problem mm -hmm. in, though, is because then if you're building Jade, do you have Thunder Rosa lose that one to her? So then – Arguably, I don't know. I know Britt Baker's the popular take. I, I prefer Thunder Rosa as probably the best woman uh, women's wrestler they have right now. Yeah, yeah. But that's just got a lot uh, of talent. But I mean, but Thunder Rosa to me is is the one of the best women's wrestlers out there right now. Oh, I'd yeah. easily put her in the top five. Yeah, but so but to answer your question, I think they at some point yes, they the, the feud has to happen. Um, I just hope that they can hold off long enough that it's not title for title or something that way because look the, the TBS title I, in my opinion hasn't been around long enough for them to even unify get rid of nor do I want to see it uh, what's the word I'm looking for I don't want to see it wasted being yeah. put on the main champion as well yeah I, I'm, I'm not as big a fan of two belt champions as uh, except for our favorite faction at Anarchy they can win all the belts they want because they yeah, do exactly. it right the program is awesome yeah but I'll tell you, there's somebody who doesn't want somebody on their program. And that leads us to our next question. Ooh. Wyatt from Perry, Arkansas. Perry, no, Perry, Ohio. Okay, Perry, Ohio. Does the Briscoe boys being shut out by Warner Media show the power the network really has? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, your answer. He, now, we'll elaborate on it, but yes. So let me ask you, like, is anybody surprised by that? Like, I always say, like, there's a reason the WWE plays the game they play, right? Like, everybody's like, why is, you know, they hate the PG era. They hate this. Okay, they do it because that's what the networks want. And the Attitude Era would have never made it on Fox. No. And not that 
billion dollar streaming contract over for Peacock. So the Peacock thing, I think, is a different little bit of twist. But I think the Peacock deal happens because the Fox thing. I think it's cause and effect. I don't think it's so. If let's say we were still Attitude Era and they never make it to, you know, Fox, I don't even know if the Peacock thing's of interest. No, the only reason not. it has even remotely of chance is because it's in the USA family. Yeah. So there's a shot. Streaming yeah. services be damned. You're behind a paywall. I think things are different. But when you're slapping yeah. things on a on a television channel that's got commercials on it, yeah, I think that's a little bit different. And um, look, we're not even getting into the like, the what's and the whys in the house. The bigger question was, like I said, was networks will always have a you know, look. Why do you think like the domino thing happened, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, networks get involved because they they do. It's their network. They're the one. By the way, they're the ones paying you. That's why. Yeah. It's it's only and they 40, get money 45 from million. advertisers. Yeah. And if advertisers don't get a money, they can't pay you. So they're always going to want to create content. Like we don't talk about politics here on the show. You know why? Because we don't want to offend advertisers that that don't want to have shows with politics. Correct. <laughs> we want to stay as 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 neutral on that as we can be. No one wants to take Nebraska's side on what they said. Are they good wrestlers? I think they're okay wrestlers. They're 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 a decent tag team. Um, but if you're going to be endorsing somebody with your money and your time, you're not going to want uh, something that's going to offend people that won't give you money. Right, because money money controls everything. Like even like yeah. you know uh, to follow up part of the story, like as far as the power of the network or what the network can do for or against you. David Arquette just put out that you know. He wanted to do something in AEW when he was doing his documentary that, you know, you can't kill David Arquette. He wanted to do something there. A lot of those guys at that point in time that were in AEW are in AEW. They they were in the documentary. A lot of these indie guys were there. So he wanted to be a part of it, talked about it with Cody. It seemed like everything was good. It worked its way up the food chain. But then the, you know, the people at Warner Media, they wanted him physically, like they wanted him to pay. Like an advertiser to be on there. And he was kind of like, so basically they wanted him to pay to wrestle there. It wasn't, by the way, I'm going to clarify something because it wasn't, he said it wasn't against Cody. It wasn't anything against TK. It was literally the, the, somebody in the Warner media house, the executives that made that decision. And that's why he didn't wrestle there. Yeah. Um, And that's a smart decision still, because if you're going to put somebody on your advertise on your, on your program, that's wanting to advertise something, you're going to charge them. Do you think people don't pay the WWE when they advertise on that program? Red no. Notice, the the Rock, the Ryan Reynolds movie, paid. Yes. The yes. Zombies, paid. So now here's the thing: I can see it both ways. If it was like a cross promotional, they were doing you know David Arquette a favor. He was going to be on there and try to draw some new eyes. That's the trade off. I think that might be the side that the execs didn't get. David Arquette might draw eyes that other people didn't you're, draw. You're thinking, you're thinking like a wrestling person now. No, I, I think from a business standpoint, I think David Arquette could bring fresh eyes to the product that weren't watching it at the time. This was back could in, be. like, this is like 1819. This is like when they started. Okay. So they needed, and here's the thing, they needed all the exposure they could have, and he might bring a, f- a fresh, you know, look. Who yeah. knows? I mean, I'm just saying, you know. There's a story to be made there. Let's uh, let's go with that. There's a story I thought to be made there. So, um, you know, it's just I thought it would have been something that was can't miss. Kind of like we feel like our show is my own. It's can't yes. miss. And the way yes. you don't miss it, of course, is you subscribe anywhere yes. and everywhere. Uh, if you're on YouTube, make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're, you know, not you know turning on that little bell so it notifies you every time a new thing drops. Whether it's us, whether it's these, you know, some of the indie matches, which I've got to put some of those back up. I've fallen behind over the last week because of a lot of stuff going on, uh, but I'm going to put some more of those up. Subscribe on you know iHeartMedia, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Spotify, of course. We love Spotify. Make oh, yeah. sure you're giving us those five-star rating and reviews if you like the show. We would greatly appreciate it. And, of course, patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. Always a good home you know, to subscribe there. You're not, listen, I told you I was going to, I promised you new content. 
So it's not just getting the show early. It's getting the videos early. It's also getting the, you know, the mind dumps when I do those. Um, I'll get Myron on board. We'll get him doing some as well. Yes, uh, definitely. Just random I can't acts wait. of random. I really enjoyed I, that last one you did. I listened to on the way home from work last night, and I really enjoyed that. Um, I can't wait to do something like that. Yeah, it's just the ramblings of a madman. Yeah. That's what I said. I mean, what days I wake up, I literally, I'm at my desk right here. Um, I don't even hook up everything, so I apologize to everybody in advance about the audio. I literally record straight into Audacity just as I sit here. Uh, thoughts that are running through my brain so I don't forget them. Boom, dump those uh, kind of thing. So, you know, something a little well, I, different. I'm going to have to try that because, uh, folks, I've got either got an ear infection or a sinus infection, and my ears are popping under these headphones. So I've been out of sorts recording without earphones. Sounds like a, a nice little treat. Oh, because I'm getting a little dizzy. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, hey, look, there. we also wanted to put it out there. There's not going to be a full separate Georgia Indie Talk. There wasn't really like a ton, you know, of stuff in our, yeah. my opinion this week. Well, um, we had IWE, which had a very good show from all reports. Uh, good crowd, lots of, lots of excitement, uh, brought in a lot of our people we know. And when the guys I talked to were impressed and happy. So if the wrestlers are happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Listen, you got Joe Black on top, Anthony Henry on top, exotic youth on top. Lindsay Snow now is your new women's yes. uh, champion. Take um, the world to her. Carly Bravo is your new mayhem champion. Tons of stuff going on. Like you said, we're excited. Listen, the Southern Strong style, Hold My Beer Hanson, you know, we're talking Proc the Croc Johnson, J2 Strong, they made their debut. Um, that's what makes me excited about it. If, yeah. if you want to get nicked in, okay, first of all, I could not get the, I tried to get the wife to go down this weekend. She wasn't listening. It was, it's, it's like a three and a half hour, you know, drive to the show, and she just wasn't feeling that. So I was like, now you want to get Nick to drive to Augusta? Southern Strong style, Southern Strong style is probably how you get me there. Like you know, yeah. I love me some Proc, the Croc Johnson and J Two Strong, of course. Yeah. Oh, my beer Hanson's been a you know we've been fans of his for a long time. Uh, not to mention all the other just massive talents. Massive talent, have. yeah, uh, a lot it, of talent look, on that from, show. From everything we've seen, read, and heard, hell of a show. Kudos to those guys. Um, I know that like in a couple, they they run every two months. Uh, they got their I'm yeah. I think that's their anniversary show, so start looking for the you know the stuff coming out about those matches and things like that. Um, you know, like look, wrestling's good, man. Uh, everybody's doing well. Um, you know, it's a healthy I'll, place right now. Yeah, I think so. Um, and listen, sometimes things just change your perspective, Myron. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes things happen. You just go, you know what? Fuck it. You roll with it, and and I think that's where a lot of us are. You know, especially yeah. when these guys are picking up momentum like they are. Because listen. Uh. I know this weekend's not a huge weekend. Um, KLT is big. Uh, I know APW is running in Royston. Um, God, what was Pro South, of course, if you're over in Alabama. Pro running. Yeah, um, and you got you got that Ox show in Commerce. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could get out to that, um, but I will be at work at the time. And the, Wait a minute. Uh, How are you? You're not working Saturday. Yeah, I am. Did you? Is this a trade your soul day that you made? No, 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 no. I was off last weekend. I didn't go anywhere because I wasn't feeling well. So uh, that's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. So anyway, um, so you got listen. If you if you if if you're if you've been involved in the wrestling business at all, you know Ox and you know all that he does and the, you know, the rings that he provides for a lot of these shows. Yeah. Uh, Commerce Saturday, the show. There's a big you know Southern Violence and wrestling running to show up there. It's a it's an Ox benefit. Uh, head out that way, and so you know help kind of help you know ox as much as possible we always it's kind of a thing that we're really big behind so we mm -hmm. think that's Definitely. what you should be doing anyway so yeah Amen. um that's everything i have for today do you have anything else before we get nope, out of here nope. man i'm i'm uh road to wrestlemania highway to hardcore hell coming uh southern fried in two weeks or southern fried in a week after this then you got Two weeks for Anarchy, and then in right out a month, we have the big Southern Honor and Anarchy weekend. So, well, the beginning of the, I mean, the beginning of April is a big double header. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. tons It'll of stuff nuts, going on. Folks. Okay, listen, it's confused as the shit as we just were with shows, which is why you should be following the Rob Rod Report on yes. Facebook <laughs> because he puts it out. I share it, but you need to follow him and make yes. sure that you're keeping up with all of the shows. 
there on the Rob Rod report. Like, I mean, he doesn't make it any, I mean, he couldn't make it any, well, he could, I guess. He could, like, buy your tickets and drive you there and all that kind of stuff. He could make it easier, but that's not kind of the point, right? Well, I mean, Rob does more for indie wrestling than just about anybody in Georgia, in my opinion. Yeah. He benefits a, benefits indie wrestling because he organizes all these posters and the shit my scattered brain ass doesn't keep up with to let you know where it's going to be, who's going to be there, what time it's going to be. Rob's the man to see. Okay? Yep. Absolutely 100% agree. That's who you need to kind of, you know, Keep up with there on the Facebook page, the Rob Rod Report. Um, and like I said, we do share it, but I, I give him the follow because he does all the hard work. And, uh, you know, that'll keep you up on as far as the local Georgia wrestling shows go. Um, and, you know, over on Patreon, we're putting out the schedule nationally as well, yeah. uh, trying to keep you at the loop. So make sure you're subscribing over there as well. But, man, well, if that's all we got, man, what's the old saying, brother? If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out.